we live on a great big blue dot, a world that's covered with seawater, salt water, and only 2% of that water is fresh, even though that's what we need to have every day of our lives. We can't live without three day, go three days without it. And yet somehow we don't take care of it very well. I remember back in the day, 50 years ago, the Cuyahoga River would occasionally just burst into flames. I lived in a city nearby and, you know, wow, who knew? Actual flames, smoke over the Cleveland skyline. And that outraged people. It, politicians even talked about it, the environment, this new thing passed new laws, and we thought we solved the problem. But I'm here to tell you today that 50 years later, our freshwater resources are still a resource in peril. We're burning our rivers and burning our water in ways that aren't as easy to see, but are just as stupid, just as foolish. And instead of seeing flames, what we see are toxic algae blooms and fish kills and dry riverbanks, riverbeds. So how did we get here? Our economy has developed kind of an odd way where um, water utilities are one thing and energy utilities are the other. And you think that water and energy are totally different and not related to each other. And because of that, we uh, have made some foolish choices and wasted and a water and built a system that's just plain inefficient. In fact, they're tightly connected and you can't make one without impacting the other. And this is because, well, to start with, most of our electricity is still made the way it was 50 years ago, the old fashioned way, where you burn something to turn water into steam and that then in turn turns turbines. Lots of turbines all over America. Coal, natural gas, uh, nuclear. But there's so many power plants that now half of all of our fresh surface water withdrawals go to the energy sector. That's more than all of agriculture combined, and that's more than all of our cities, and the two of them combined. I guess that's because it's more than 50%. But every year, as we have more heat waves and more drought, we have power plants that we have to suddenly shut down because the water is too hot to effectively cool the uh, process. Or reservoirs, hydropower reservoirs, that just don't have any water in them to generate electricity. So as a society, as I said, we've made some foolish choices. And we've created sort of a collision course between two things we really like a lot, which is having good fresh water and having more energy and electricity in particular, to the point where now the average American household uses 250 gallons a day of water through all of the pipes and hoses and faucets that you have. It's 250 gallons every day. Um, that's a lot of water, and we really need to conserve some of that. But before we can, we need to address a serious problem. And that is, we have to find the people out there that are taking 400 gallon showers every day. I mean, who would do that? I mean, this is five gallons. This is uh, enough to take a shower, one would think. And I'm as shocked as you are. I want to know who are these people, how can we find them, where do they live? <laughs> we won't have to look far because it's everyone in this room. We've become the prime suspects in what I call the case of the 400 gallon shower. So what is the case of the 400 gallon shower? First lesson in water and energy dynamics, water is heavy and it doesn't run uphill. If you haven't carried this bucket to your house full of water or you don't use a hand pump, 
somebody out there is using electricity to pump water to your house. And there's a lot of us out there. It really, really adds up to be a lot of energy. In fact, our water utilities use, you know, they have the biggest uh, electric bills of anyone. Fully 4% of all of the water or the electricity purchased in America is purchased by water utility companies. And we as consumers use easily more than twice that much to heat that water when it gets to our house for some purpose. A lot of that is waste heat that goes right down the drain in your shower. And when we waste that heat, somebody has to pay for it eventually. Unfortunately, the companies, that, the water companies themselves, aren't wealthy, you know, evil characters. They don't have a lot of money, and they rarely have enough money to invest in effective conservation programs. So much that fully 10% of all of our treated drinking water in this country is lost in leaky pipes before it ever gets to a consumer. And when the city runs out of water completely, then they'll do anything to get more. Believe me, they'll do anything. And all of the expenses associated with finding that next gallon of water go way up, especially the energy. Um, they'll dig deeper wells, put on more pumps on the system, build a new dam hundreds of miles away, pump it over a mountain. And if that city is near an ocean, what will they think of next? Desalinization. Of course, the perfect answer, the ocean. 98% of all of our water out there is in the oceans. What, what's wrong with that? Desalinization uses 15 times as much energy as any other water source. So we're using, and this is a great idea, we can just use energy to make more water. And on the other hand, we can use water to make more energy, right? This is a 100 watt freedom bulb. It's hard to find anymore. You can't really buy them anymore. Um, but to run this for 10 hours takes a kilowatt hour. And while different fuel types have slightly different needs, it's the cooling towers and the once through cooling systems that really suck water. So coal and nuclear, they use a lot of water directly and a lot of water indirectly through you know, coal ash ponds and slurry and that type of stuff. But for, um, natural gas, a lot of those combined cycle uh, facilities use a lot less. They're closer down to the six gallon uh, per kilowatt hour level. Unless, of course, the natural gas is produced by fracking, in which case millions of gallons is used uh, in ways we don't even know about and disappears into the ground either to come up as pollution somewhere or somebody else's problem. So what could be worse for our water than fracking? Well, here in Idaho, we are very uh, pleased to have zero carbon hydropower. And we use about 50% of our energy, Idaho power comes from hydro, the other 50 is a mixture of coal, mostly coal, and some natural gas. Um, and this takes 400 gallons to make a single kilowatt hour of uh, hydroelectricity to turn the turbines. Now, a lot of that goes down to the next dam where it can be used again, but a lot of it evaporates. Um, I mean, a lot of it evaporates. So, for example, on the Colorado River, over the last three years, the reservoir levels have been just falling, falling, falling because of evaporation and the drought. Um, one big reservoir, Lake Mead, evaporates in one year a million acre feet of water. That's as much as we have in all of our dams in the Boise River Basin. That's as much as we use to, to supply all of the Treasure Valley farmers and all of our <coughs> urban needs. All just gone, evaporated in one year. Now really, since the electric grid is produced, many different plants doing different things, um, it, it's hard to figure out what the water footprint of electricity is. 
So I added it all up, divided by cooling types and by um, the number of kilowatt hours that we produce, and came up with a, a small statistic that the water footprint of electricity is 40 gallons per kilowatt hour. 40 gallons to run this light for 10 hours. This gets so exciting. <laughs> Because 40 gallons just happens to be the amount of water that it takes the average American um, for a hot shower. If you have five gallon per hour or per minute shower head and you stand there for eight minutes, it'll be 40 gallons. Isn't that really coincidental? That is so cool. <laughs> but it's not enough water to actually uh, heat that hot water. So this is 40 gallons. The, the red, so the dot up here should be a dot up here. Oh, I'll move back just one. But the, the red dot, never mind. <laughs> the red dot is just the amount of water you see going down the drain. But you're not seeing the whole story because of the water associated with heating up that water, because of energy. Gosh, it's so hard to keep them separate to heat up that water. It takes about nine more kilowatt hours of electricity. That's nine times 40. It's 360. It's a 400 gallon shower. <laughs> that's the blue bar. That's the blue bar. Um, and that's what you're using. Well, it's water that's used. And when we say used, I mean, your toilet uses water. It moves on to some other, you know, to a facility. It's used, polluted, or lost. 40 gallons that's used, polluted, or lost for every kilowatt hour of electricity. So I know some of you are sitting out there right now going, I don't have this problem because I use gas. I have a gas water heater, not an electric one. But you're not off the hook unless you're off the grid on this problem because our grid, since We've mixed all of those different fuels together. Uh, actually, to run your house for a month takes 40,000 gallons of water to be used, polluted, or lost somewhere else that you're probably not seeing. I think this is the time I'm supposed to talk about climate change. Because <laughs> this is happening for every house every month across the country. 40,000 gallons. Well, how many is that? 800? Um, no, 80,000 buckets of water is being used to keep your house going for one month. So, of course, climate changes reduces our reliable water supplies in a lot of different ways. And we can't predict exactly when the next drought is going to be or where it's going to be. But basically, the hydrologic system is out of balance. Our water cycle has been responding to increased levels of carbon. And it isn't going to change in our lifetimes. All that carbon is already out of the barn. So we have to get used to this new water cycle that we have. And that's why I think it's time to change what we're burning, to stop burning water to turn turbines the old-fashioned way. Because we're going to run out of water way, way, way before we run out of fossil fuels. So there's good news, really good news. <laughs> and that is, we don't have to burn water anymore. Uh, solar power, PV solar power uses just about a liter of water for every um, kilowatt hour. I needed that. And wind power uh, uses just a few teaspoons of water. And that includes the water to produce the panels and the turbines and operate them, low water solutions. So if we were running this country right and we had an energy system that wasn't wasting water, all of us really could take five gallon and a few teaspoon showers. So how do we get there? Oh, simple things we have around the house. The first choice is always conservation. And if you reduce the time in your shower by half, then you will save half of the water. So a timer, which you can get from uh, United Water, uh, will help you shorten your shower from the typical eight-minute shower. You can install energy-efficient 
uh, and water efficient fixtures. Something like this, a low flow shower head, pays for itself in a year. Oh, and then what else do we have? Let's see. Oh yeah, saving the water, saving energy saves water. So turn off the lights. Every time you turn off the lights, um, say you, you forget to turn off the light and you go to work in the morning and you come home 10 hours later, you've just used not just the electricity, but 40 gallons of water. So this is a new incentive to get people to turn off the lights. It wastes a lot of water as well. So all of these personal decisions are great. Conservation efficiency is important. Innovation is really important. Solar hot water heaters, hello, we can install those a lot more easily than um, uh, just about anything that we can do immediately. But all of those decisions have to be backed up by uh, our agencies and our wider society. So here's a cool idea. To address the, the problem of evaporation on water canals, why don't we shade the canals with solar panels? Um, that's in India. That's a little project that I'm aware of. And then closer to home, why don't we convert our feedlots and dairies to biogas, to generate biogas, and save water pollution and generate electricity at the same time? And heck, while we're at it, why should cows get all the good stuff? We could build net zero wastewater treatment plants as well. So it's human impulse, I think, to want to have more of the stuff we're afraid of running out of. We want more energy. We want more water, especially when it gets hot out. But we're getting to the point now where we can't get more until we start, start using less. And maybe to think this through, we need to form, instead of two water utilities, one single problem solving unit, a, uh, an energy and water service utility that could prioritize low water renewables and use our consumer dollars to fix the leaky pipes beneath the city. If we can just do that kind of transition in our own heads and start this conversation about separating our energy needs and our water needs and always worrying about more, we need more of everything, and start talking about let's have enough water, let's have enough energy to run our new economy, then if we do those things, you know, we're going to have enough water to drink, water for our farms and food to eat, and none of you are ever going to get caught taking a 400-gallon shower again. <laughs>